Hello, Johnny here, and in this video, we're going to learn how to animate a flag in 3D space using a shader. This is a companion video to the tutorial on the GD Quest website. The link is in the description below. Let's get started. I have Godot 3.2 loaded up, so what I'm going to do is create a 3D scene, and I'm going to add a mesh instance as a child of this. This is going to be our flag, and our flag is going to use a plain mesh, which we're going to select from the drop down menu here. And if we click into the mesh, we've got a few properties that we can change. What we're most interested in is the subdivide width and the subdivide depth. Now this dictates how many vertices we've got to work with. If I go over to perspective here, this button here, and change it to display wireframe, you can see how many vertices we've got. And at the minute we've only got four, one on each corner. So if we subdivide the width by say 32 and the depth by 32 as well, you can see that we've got plenty more vertices to work with and this will make our animation look less jagged. The other thing we're going to change is the size. We're going to change the x value to 3 to give us a 3 by 2 ratio which often flags are. Now we've got the general shape we're going to add a shader material and if I click into this we're going to add a new shader and clicking this will allow us to start typing the shader. The first thing we're going to define is the shader type. Now because we're working in 3D we're going to use the spatial shader type and we're also going to add a uniform sampler 2D called UV offset texture. This uniform is something that we can pass into the shader, and the hint black keyword here just returns a black texture if none is defined. Now because we defined this uniform in the shader, we can start setting it in the inspector. So on the right here we've got a new section called shader param, and I'm going to add a new noise texture. If I click into it you can see the properties of this noise texture. Now the way this works is that Godot generates this noise in chunks of, at the minute, 512 by 512 squares, and then it just puts them all together. This isn't ideal for our case because we want a smooth transition between these squares. So all you need to do there is just make sure seamless is enabled. And then we can create our noise. We're going to use open simplex noise. And if you click into it, you can see some properties there. We're not gonna mess with these for now, but feel free to mess around with them when we finish the flag, just to see what they do. Now that we have our noise texture, we can start sampling it in the shader. To simulate this movement, we're going to use the vertex function. This allows us to manipulate the vertices that we created before. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new variable called noise, and we're going to use the texture built-in function here and pass in UV offset texture and the UV coordinates. This will sample this noise texture at the UV coordinates there. Now this will return a color. In this case, we choose to sample the red value. We then take this value between 0 and 1 and add it to the vertex.y position. Now, as you can see, we've got some nice hills and valleys because we sampled the noise texture. However, things look a little bit too spiky. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on this noise texture. So if you imagine we're sampling this noise texture, we've got a camera looking at it. What we're going to do is pull in with the camera. So all of these hills and valleys, they're going to be a bit larger and spread out a bit more. To do that, we're going to add another uniform, and this is going to be a vector two, and we're gonna call it UV offset scale. I'm gonna set it to minus 0.2 and minus 0.1 in the X and Y respectively. In the vertex function, I'm going to add a new variable called base UV offset, which is also a vector two, and I'm gonna set it to UV times UV offset scale. I'm then going to pass this variable into the texture function to get the zoomed in coordinate. So you'll notice in the viewport, we've already got this flattened curve to our flag. It's already looking a bit better. However, our flag is not moving. So let's get it moving by adding the time to the base UV offset. We've got movement, but it's looking a little bit erratic. So we're going to introduce a new uniform, which is going to slow things down. This is another vector two, and I'm gonna call it time scale and set it to 0.3 and 0 in the X and Y respectively. I'm then going to multiply the time by this time scale. So this has done two things. This has both slowed down the movement and also stopped any kind of scrolling in the vertical axis. So it looks like our wind is going from left to right. Now you may notice the flag is hovering above the axis here. This is because when we sample the texture, we're getting a value between 0 and 1, whereas we want a value between minus 1 and 1. What I'm going to do is add this line here, which will convert the range of 0 to 1 to minus 1 and 1. So we're going to put this in a new variable called texture based offset, and it's going to equal noise times 2 minus 1. We're then going to increase the vertex.y by this amount instead of noise. Now, as you can see, the flag sits nicely on the red axis here. 
Now our flag is looking pretty good. However, flags are oftentimes attached to something at one end. So we're gonna simulate this by adding dampening to the flag. What we want is an effect which completely stops the movement on the left hand side, but having complete movement on the right hand side. And as we go from left to right, we want a linear progression of movement. Luckily, we have a very simple solution to this. We can use the uv.x value. So what I'm going to do is multiply the texture-based offset by uv.x. And as you can see, we do have that effect. We've got no movement on the left and we've got full movement on the right. Let's take a look at the top of this flag and explain what's going on here. So when you've got a shape like this, the uv coordinates in the top left are 0, 0, and the uv coordinates in the bottom right are 1, 1. So as we go from left to right, the uv.x value is gonna go from 0 to 1. When we go from the top to the bottom, the uv.y value is gonna go from 0 to 1. Now, you also will notice as we're looking at the top, there's not a lot of movement on the other axes. So they are the vertex.z and the vertex.x axes. So to fix this, we're going to add another uniform called face distortion. This is going to be a float, and I'm gonna set it to 0 0.5. Then I'm going to use this as a coefficient to the texture base offset and add it to the vertex.z. And I'm going to do the same for the vertex.x as well. But this time I'm going to negate the face distortion. This is because I think it looks better if we're trying to conserve the area of the flag. And there we have it. We have our finished flag movement. Now, of course, you can use the fragment shader to add colors and shapes or even add your own texture to the flag, but that's not something we're going to do in this tutorial. You'd also want to rotate the flag so it's standing up because it looks a bit strange lying down on the floor there, but otherwise we're done. I invite you to check out the GD Quest website. We've got plenty more tutorials on there with more coming as well. They range from networking, procedural generation, user interface, and much more. If you enjoyed me rambling on for so long, I also have my own channel if you want to check that out. But otherwise, we'll catch you later and happy coding. Cheers.